okay, I'm from the Department of Earth and Environment. So it's like a complete reversal from business to the world of actual earth measurement. And I'm going to be using a lot of remote sensing data for this particular project that was done with students. Uh, Mira Kelly Fair, who's my doctoral student who worked on this project. And I had another postdoc, Yashang Mao, who's a postdoc at the uh, Sargent College working with me. And a new student has joined in who's going to be working with me on deep learning and AI related to this project. So and I'll talk a little bit more about things in space. So we are looking at Indonesia and we have satellite measurements going all the way back to the year 2000. So when you look at the deforestation that's happening in Indonesia, um, that's shown in green, there are many different types of forests. We want to look at what is called forest morphology, which is the core forest, the corridors in the forest, and all the other areas around it, and look at the changes that are happening in a country like Indonesia, which is growing a lot of palm oil. There's also urban expansion in many, many cities in Indonesia. And there's also uh, rubber plantations going up, you know, for commercialization of agriculture that brings a lot of money to the people in Indonesia. So when you look at the next slide, you immediately get a sense that the amount of green in these graphs, in, especially in Borneo, Java, Sumatra, that's the island on the other side, is getting smaller and smaller. So we can actually see it on the satellite and we can do these measurements using both two different satellites, Landsat and Sentinel. So it's a lot of coding. All of this data is available at this point from NASA. So I can keep going to the year 2016 as well as the year 2021, there seems to be a less number of changes that one could expect between the year 2016 and 2021, because Indonesia had to sort of sign into European regulations and had to become part of the round table, you know, conference on palm oil, um, RSVO. And they found many of the people who were planters in Indonesia found it very difficult to be part of this mainstream international organization. So Indonesia has its own little club of uh, certification, which is not so good, but they claim that that's the one where everybody is certified, every company is certified. So I just want to finish with those slides and go on to show you what can I see from space. So when you look at these kinds of things, we can go in and mark all the different areas of change in different colors and look at the entire spectrum of the changes that have happened with palm oil. So one of the things, this is only using spectral signatures, which is called the naturalized uh, vegetation index, which is uh, near infrared and red bands and the spectral uh, wavelengths. But we would want to use now using high resolution imagery, I should be able to go in and spot a particular palm tree and take a lot of training samples, takes a long time. I would need at least 2000 samples and Nalin has not given me enough money now to do this. I tried doing a hundred at a time. It takes a lot, long time and you need to be able to get the structure, the density, the canopy of the tree and so on using the so-called deep AI and deep learning architectures. So doing that, we sort of find in the initial set of results that was presented by Mira at uh, the IEEE conference on remote sensing this summer, we show that there is a lot of forest loss happening because of palm oil. So you may ask me what exactly is the carbon scope one uh, sort of emission loss because of carbon being uh, sent back. If you cut one acre of forest or one hectare of rainforest in Indonesia, it releases 150 tons of carbon. One hectare, 150. I thought that was easier to remember than converting into square kilometers, uh, but we could do that. We also looked at all the different types of biodiversity in terms of animals that are going to be lost. Indonesia, as you know, has got four classes of species of animals, uh, which are, you know, some of them near extinct, endangered, critically endangered, 
vulnerable to deforestation and so on. So we, we measured around each one of these plantations. We went in and measured what's happening around and what would be the habitat loss. And this is using another data set called the IUCN, which is produced by um, uh, NGO. So we can sort of see that there's a lot of changes that are happening in terms of the biodiversity. Why am I interested in mentioning biodiversity? Lots of people here have mentioned frameworks. I think we mentioned SASP framework, that's one. Uh, somebody mentioned UN SDGs. They, it's an alphabet soup of frameworks. It's not one. There are more than 30 frameworks that one has to account for. At this point, every company from Europe that you know, produces and uses palm oil needs certification using what's called the European uh, Sustainable Financial Disclosure Agreement that went into effect March of this year. So every company has to sort of account for the scope three emission coming from palm oil by next year. This year, all companies have to report scope one and scope two. Their emissions, the carbon release and their use of electricity that was the focus of Nullin's paper. So we can see that because of the European regulation, most European companies at this point that are dealing with Indonesian palm oil that's used for everything, including your toothpaste, uh, makeup, uh, you name it, everything uses palm oil. And palm oil was discovered to be a substitute for animal fat. So you can see where we are headed because at some point, there's no more palm trees left. I mean, no more rainforests left. The other thing with Indonesia that you find is also the fact that there's a lot going on in terms of, this is shut down, okay. There's a lot going on in terms of um, the UN SDGs uh, that was also mentioned here. So you can find that there's usually a trade-off between the SDGs. Of course, you want to provide employment to people, but at the same time, you're sacrificing your rainforest. So these are the kinds of issues that we are looking at. And we are able to, since we are using geography and actual measurements on the ground, we are able to sort of account for a lot of this in terms of actual numbers. So by the time this project is done, especially with the deep learning, I think we would be in a much better place of actually accounting for small plantations versus very large commercial plantations owned by major companies and we should be able to account for the exact amount of carbon loss because there's now going to be a carbon mission, one of the satellites that measures carbon emission. So we are in a very good place in terms of actual accounting and measurement. And I would like to thank IMAP and Susan and Nalan in particular for encouraging being with us all for the whole journey, in fact. And uh, we have a lot more to do because it's also part of our education in terms of uh, guiding the students, because there are a lot more sustainability jobs now in every company. So we need to do something with all the papers that were put in here today. Thank you.